uh, family business, family oriented business. Uh, been in business since 2000, uh, building roller coasters. We uh, started out uh, repairing roller coaster tracks. Uh, and now we're to this juncture where we're building roller coasters with our newly developed track, Topper Track and iBox. We've done a little research on some of the first projects you worked on. How did you transition from doing smaller uh, kind of thrill park attractions to something like Outlaw Run? Well, the transition came when we, uh, we developed the new iBox and Topper Track. Uh, the new technologies, uh, are allowing us to take wood coasters to a new level. And so you can see with what we've created here, uh, the bar has been raised. Uh, we're at a whole new level of uh, building and construction methods for the wooden roller coaster industry. And so it has just been a tremendous uh, upswing in, uh, in the wood coaster. Awesome. And if you could just walk us through the process of how this ride was chosen for this park, did HFE contact you? Did SDC contact you? How did, how did that work? Um, Silver Dollar uh, City asked us to uh, come down and uh, promote what we had to offer. So uh, we were in competition with the other companies and so we promoted what we had to offer. Uh, the talks went further and uh, we came up with some design and some elements that we're going to put into the coaster. And they said, let's go for it. Well, consequently to uh, do this, we had to develop a set of cars for this coaster that would twist that far. So uh, we developed the cars with the suspension system, uh, it enabled us to uh, do everything that we've done. Uh, the track enables us to do what we're, we've done. If we were to do this with traditional track, we would not be able to do it. Uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do things this crazy. So uh, we've been able to put all these tricks in this uh, coaster and that's, as you can see, it's a remarkable ride. Do you have any specific stories of maybe that, that turning point where they realized that this is exactly what we want for this park? Like for example, on the floor at this trade show, they you know signed this deal or anything specific? We went with the park here and we went to the Texas Giant. They rode the Texas Giant. Uh, they came to our facilities in Idaho. Uh, we, the talks went on for a while. Um, it was at that point when they rode the Texas Giant and they came to our facilities that they saw that uh, we had what it takes to put this together and to do all these elements that had never been done before in a wood structure. So together, Silver Dollar City and the Rocky Mountain team uh, put this project together. They helped tremendously on this. Uh, they were great partners. Um, they helped in uh, design different elements uh, so and it just all came together they've been great partners how's outlaw run a game changer for the industry uh, well as you can see it's uh, this coaster is a game changer for the industry because we're able to invert we're able to put more forces on the track we're able to have a steeper drop which this drop is the steepest in the world right now on a wood coaster um, the double barrel roll, uh, we're inverting twice there, uh, going upside down. Um, it's just, it's a game changer. It's, it's just unheard of uh, with a wood coaster to be able to do this. And we've proven that uh, it now can be done and it works. What were some specific challenges you had to overcome for this project, whether in the design and planning phase or whether in the construction phase? Well. Uh, as you can see, we used the existing terrain to uh, develop the coaster. Alan Schilke, uh, my partner, he's the design engineer uh, of the company, and he has, uh, he has used the terrain to our benefit. So um, that's why you'll see when you look at the coaster out there, it follows, it follows the undulation that's, that's been provided for us by nature. And, so, and 
another challenge was we wanted to leave all of the foliage in the trees, so we had to work around that. Um, working on the steep hillsides, that was another challenge. What were some of the original layouts considered or some of the original elements that maybe didn't make it into the ride? Do you, do you have any input on that? Uh, n no, uh, all the elements that we put into the ride, we pretty much hit the first time. Uh, everybody liked them, everybody liked the concept. We, at that point, we just, we decided that's what's going to be designed and uh, that's what Alan went with. And Alan Schilke, he is a very creative ride designer. And uh, he, we work well together because he likes the ability to be able to just open up and do what he wants. And we have a lot of faith in each other, so uh, it works well for us. Now walk us through the, the layout, if you don't mind, and just talk about some of the different elements. Like, for instance, I, I think I was doing a little research and heard another interview where you or someone else was talking about why the double barrel roll is where it is and just having to get back up to the level of the station. Okay, well, the, the elements are where they're at because we want to create a ride experience that is exciting all the way through the ride so there isn't any dead spots and that's the big thing also we want to create a ride experience where any age person can ride the ride come back around and they want to ride it again so it's not a one-time ridership and that's the idea and, and when you can do that you've you've been successful so for instance we we have the 153 degree overbank turn uh, at the beginning of the ride at the top of that high hill. Uh, we, we come around, we go over some air time, uh, we go through the structure, uh, we go through a wave turn that hasn't been done before. Uh, we create some more air time and then at the end of the ride we elected to put the double barrel roll uh, as the grand finale. So after the double barrel roll you come into the brakes, uh, you've had a exciting ride the whole trip so and that's what you try to create and that's what this ride has done that's what's uh, created so much excitement about this ride obviously you've done a lot that's never been done before is there anything that you are not willing to do with a wooden coaster you know you always hear the enthusiasts talking about when will we have our first floorless or inverted or all these different crazy ideas what will you not do uh there isn't anything that we uh, are not going to do with the wooden roller coasters. Uh, we have a lot of uh, ideas. We have a lot of things that we're going to do. We have things, uh, we have ideas, things in development right now that haven't been done with a wooden roller coaster that go above and beyond what anybody uh, has thought of. So. Um, I can't say what they all are right now, but right. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for that, but uh, we have new things coming out, new stuff coming. Because of everything that you've done and it's so intense, do you have ma different maintenance concerns for this ride than you would have for other rides? Well, the maintenance question is a good question. So, uh, the one, one reason why we've developed this track is because we uh, installed and worked on traditional wood coaster tracks. Uh, we, we've always thought there's a better way to do things to eliminate or decrease the maintenance on the track. Um, so we put this track in to, for that purpose. Uh, along with that you get all the benefits of being able to put in all the different elements. So the, the maintenance issues are a lot less on this coaster than they are on traditional wood coasters. Would you be able to compare and contrast this with some of your previous projects, like the new Texas Giant, for instance? Um, well, we uh, obviously our first uh, our first track that we put in full track was on the Texas Giant, and it's considered what it's what we call our I-box track, and it's an all steel track. The topper track here that we've put in here is the same technology, only we have used a laminated wood stack, wood beam built up underneath the box beam on top. Uh, the differences are this is considered a wood coaster, the I-Box is considered a steel coaster track. So, but the technologies are the same. 
Um, both tracks are, the maintenance levels on them are very low. We're able to do the same elements, the same things with both tracks. So that's, uh, that's the differences between those two tracks. Um, the Texas Giant obviously was our first uh, attempt at a full track and we learned a lot on that. Um, it is now, I think, rated the number three steel ride in the world. Um, and it has, it has exceeded our expectations. So that's why we know that on our new jobs, such as Silver Dollar City, uh, the Iron Rattler, that's why we know we, we are safe to do what we're doing with it. And uh, barrel rolls, over bank turns, uh, the, all the elements that we're putting in. And we just, we have learned that, okay, the track will take it, we're good. Do you expect this to stay tight or do you expect it to be like other wooden coasters in the past that as they age, they get a little more, that, that classic wooden coaster feel or it gets a little rougher as it gets older or do you expect this to stay? This is really super smooth right yeah. now. Yeah, well, uh, the tracks are, they are super smooth and yeah. uh, we pre-manufacture them. We're able to hit the engineering numbers right on. So. Uh, that's what creates such a smooth track. Um, this track will be as smooth in eight years as it is today. So uh, they're unlike traditional wood where uh, your track starts getting rough and it propagates and the ride gets rougher and rougher. This, this track will remain the same. Uh, bolt tightening issues, that type of thing, uh, it's, it's a minimum. So uh, it it's, works well for the parks, less maintenance, uh, less wear and tear on the structure. So the longevity of the ride has been increased. So you're not gonna have issues like, I know there's lots of coasters right now, you're going back and you're retracking them because people are saying it's too rough. I can't right. Well, and the reason we're going back to retrack them is, is the roughness issue. And it's also a maintenance issue. So uh, we, like I say, that's why we've developed this track, is maintenance purposes, uh, we're able to do these things with it, yeah. Okay, and <laughs> you, get a, you get a chance here, uh, what do you, what do you want to say to the skeptics, all the people that said, well, and I hate to throw this out there, I'm just going to say <laughs> that, but we were talking in the hotel room, what do you have to say to all the people that were just like, no, no one should ever try and do a wooden coaster with an inversion after Son of Beast and all the people that said it just can't be done and I, I know you well, said but just go ahead and, and, and take the moment uh, to okay. say okay to all those that have told us that it can't be done it shouldn't be done uh, the proof is here that uh, it can be done and it does work and uh, this track assembly it makes it possible and uh, I don't know what to say other than that, that it takes the right people, it, and it, the takes, the right people. it takes a whole team of people. Exactly. Uh, we have an excellent team um, from the people in the field to the office to Alan Schilke, uh, Jake Kilcup. I mean, those guys, they, those guys make it possible. Um, it just takes a whole team. Uh, also, Silver Dollar City, uh, they are part of the team. They are part of the team that helped put this together. And and you said this was Alan's idea, right? Or because we were going to ask, mm -hmm. like, when was the when was the Eureka moment, like that this just like hit you? Was there is there a time that you know when it was just like this is what we're going to do? You know. Well, uh, uh, the, when it hit was uh, after the Texas Giant was built. Mm -hmm. Um, we knew, uh, hey, we can go upside down. We can do this. Uh, it's just a matter of time and we'll put it together. We'll make it happen and it's possible. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna have a lot of naysayers out there. You're gonna have a lot of people that tell you that it, you're, it's not wise to do this, it can't be done. But if you have the right team, you have the right product, you have the right customer, it can be done. And it's, uh, it's entirely possible. Okay, and we didn't get to ask you this, we always ask everybody this, but tell us about your first experience getting to ride the ride, because I know you're part of the design team and you got to yeah. make sure everybody else enjoys it first, but uh, how did you enjoy it when you got to ride it for the first time? Well, uh, 
Dennis, uh, Dennis here at the park and myself, we got, we took the first ride, we hopped in the front car. Uh, I can tell you, we went over the hill, uh, down through the valley. You know, when you take the first ride, you're always, it, it's always nerve wracking, you know. You test and you test and you have accelerometer tests that say, okay, it matches up to the, the forces that are, it's designed for. And, but still, there's always that little bit of wonder. And we rode that, we came in, and we both sat there, and we knew, Dennis knew he had a winner, and we knew we had a winner. It, it, it was that exciting. And we, it was, it was so exciting, it was hard to explain to the people, uh, uh, to the other guys standing next to us. We said, hop in, you gotta try this, you know. We've had the same experience. Yeah, yeah, you gotta try yeah, it, because yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's an extremely good ride. Um, we've had a big press day here at y yesterday. I mean, uh, people rode it outside. Outside people rode it for the first time. We did not. E we we didn't have one complaint anywhere. It's uh, from the comfort of the cars to the uh, ride itself. There wasn't a complaint anywhere. You know, everybody come off saying it. It it is that exciting. You know. One question uh, I'd like to bring up is, did you guys, you guys do the train design, correct? Do you, you don't go outsource. How did you guys start developing that? Because I know other companies sometimes will outsource for train design. Um, you want me to wait till that goes over? Okay. Um, the, our train development came about, uh, Silver Dollar City, uh, our team, uh, we, we agreed that uh, we needed to build new trains for this coaster, and so they commissioned us, said, uh, go ahead, build the trains. Uh, the trains are all R&D. Uh, we put together a great engineering staff to, uh, to develop the new trains with the new suspension systems to do uh, the things that we needed to have done to them. So um, it, was, it was testing. Um, it took a lot of effort. Uh, but the trains work well. You can see what we have. Uh, it, they've, they've performed flawlessly to this point. So that's a good thing when you develop and you do all the research and de development for a new system. I have one origin question that I, I've been interested in. Um, I saw you started um, zoo exhibits and smaller things like that, and then all of a sudden you were brought on to do a, a Whitewater Rapids ride and then brought back for, I believe it was Timber, Terrors, and Tremors. Mm -hmm. How did, how was that jump? Cause it just kind of seems like, I don't, you know, I'm not really good with the whole construction, so I don't know how much of it translates, but you started doing these really, you know, similar entertainment attractions and then doing these bigger rides. Well, I was uh, working for a company in Seattle, uh, building zoo exhibit type work. Uh, we went to a park called Silverwood Theme Park and they, uh, we did some artificial rock work and some artwork for them on a whitewater raft ride and, and we helped construct the whitewater raft ride. Uh, at that point, Silverwood asked me if I'd stay there and, and work and uh, the following season, they wanted to build a roller coaster. So I said, well, sure, well, why not? Let's, let's try it. And so we, uh, we hired a company, Custom Coasters, a uh, long time ago uh, to design the ride and we built it there at Silverwood. And after we built that ride, then uh, I was being asked to work for uh, around the country doing rides for and build working on rides, uh, roller coasters for different people, for different companies. And so that's how it all got started. So then we started a company ourselves to to uh, replace the wooden coaster track. And the, so that's where we're at now is we developed a new track. and and uh, we're now building our own roller coasters. The last question is, is there anything that we missed that you absolutely want to make sure that you get to talk mm. about or uh, theming we didn't talk about? Or, um, I don't know if you had anything to do with that or if that was all the part. No, or, no, all the theming here at this particular ride is all designed and done by the Silver Dollar City okay. folks. So, um, which it's very nice. I mean, they've done an excellent job here. Uh, uh, no, I can't think of anything else. Uh, I do want to say one thing, though. It takes a, it takes a whole team to put projects like this together. Exactly. They're very complex, a lot of research and development, 
uh, so it takes a whole team. Yeah. Is uh, just one more question about construction. Is it easier for you guys, I don't want to say easier or harder, but uh, this is your first fully custom. Is it when someone presents you a project like, hey, we'd like you to renovate most of the structure, you have the original structure to play with a little bit. Do you prefer doing one or the other? Is one more challenging than the other? Well, obviously, uh, the best scenario is to build your coaster from the ground up. Uh, the rebuilds uh, that we are doing on the Texas Giant and the uh, Rattler, uh, you you ha you have to use what's there. Um, although it's very successful, you still have to use what's there. So, um, in the perfect world, yeah, you want to build the coaster from the ground up. You got a blank blank palette, and so then you get to do whatever you want. But uh, you know they're all good. They're all good. They're all good jobs. It's all a very exciting company. Very exciting. It's very exciting work to do. Uh, everybody, oh, the whole team, everybody really enjoys this, this work. You know, we could, you could build square things or you can build this.